I equipped the old Colin bus CNC machine with a powerful laser diode. And here is what I learned along the way. The software preparation tends to be a little boring, so I'll rush through that part to get to the tasty electronics ASAP. The goal is to let Linux CNC control the laser. And a no-brainer solution would be to use the spindle PWM output or the coolant pump output, because those are already built in. And because those are slow mechanical processes and Linux CNC knows that, it'll always delay the axis movement for an adjustable but never zero time. The smart approach is to use M67 and the custom configuration for that looks like this. Load the PWM Gen module in its single output flavor, call its update function occasionally, call its make pulses function as often as possible, enable it, make a new connection called analog out from the analog out zero pin to the PWM Gen value input and another new connection called laser PWM from the PWM gen output to the parallel port pin 1. Of course no normal G-code contains M67 commands, so a custom CAM software would be ideal. But to get this started as soon as possible, I made a quick Python script that converts Z-axis movements from normal G-codes to M67 commands. I'm using the file input library to iterate through the lines of the input file that defaults to the command line argument array. With the in-place flag in the constructor, the standard output is redirected into the file, so you can edit it in place. If a Z movement below zero is found in a line, I replace the entire line with the M67 command that turns on the output, and vice versa. So for a G-code where composite movements of Z and X or Y are present, a more sophisticated solution is required. But for a quick test, this will suffice. It adds some unnecessary new lines, but Linux CNC doesn't care about those at all. To power the laser diode, I'll modify the 5 volt power supply to raise its maximum output current. I'll replace the 2.2 millifarad reservoir capacitor with a 6.8 millifarad one and the 500 milliamp fuse with the 2 amp one. Five volts is a little low, but the only alternative, the motor driver voltage, is beyond 40 volts if I remember correctly. And that's way too much. So for now I'll stick with the 5 volt power supply. Next I'll thread a new 3 core wire through the machine, 5 volts, ground and the PWM signal.
As the signal name strobe on the parallel port pin 1 suggests, we'll use that as a PWM output. As a constant current source, I wanted to do something really simple, like an op-amp driving a power MOSFET, but with a rather high current of this application, I'll be getting some heat and efficiency problems later, so a board solution might have been the better choice. On a breadboard it works perfectly, but I might get interested in laser engraving too, and to get something like grayscales, I need adjustable power. So I added a PWM input. Basically you can apply the PWM signal to the non-inverting input of the op-amp. That'll make its output go low as soon as a pulse arrives. And of course it works fine on the bench. Another problem though. I found that the maximum current output from this constant current source is mainly limited by three factors. I chose to use the existing 5 volt power supply. There's a substantial voltage drop across power LEDs and power laser diodes. And the maximum output voltage of the general purpose op-amp that I was using is the positive supply voltage minus 1.5. At least one of those can easily be changed. So-called rail-to-rail op-amps can bring their output very close to the supply rail voltage. I even happen to have one of these in stock. There's a little problem involved, but I'll spare you the details. Well, I made a quick prototype. Seems like I'm getting reasonably good at PCB milling, but I wish for an alternative nevertheless. Seems like one is on its way at this very moment. Let's give it a try. 50% duty cycle, and as M67 is called analog output synchronized, it happens at the next movement. Bang, let's try 100%. Like a champ. Now as you can see, even at 0% duty cycle, the LED continues to glow faintly, 20 milliamps to be precise. And I think that's because of noise going into the highly sensitive input of the op-amp. To eliminate it, I added a simple RC low-pass filter to the finished circuit. This particular laser from lasertech.com already has some threaded holes in it for mounting and heat sinking, but because heat is directly affecting the lifespan of the laser diode, I want to really go to town with this and make a custom part. Had to fight some weirdness in the cam software along the way, but ultimately it worked out. I'm gonna mill that out of solid aluminum stock so that it can be used for clamping and heat sinking. I only had a vacuum for chip extraction, that's why I was recutting chips all the time and that left a mediocre surface finish at best. But I got the dimensions right in the first try and I'm happy with the results now. Gonna apply some thermal compound and press in the laser diode. Mm. 
not sure about the heat sinking performance of this contraption. Maybe it needs another ripped heat sink on top of it, but I think I'll leave it at this for a first test. Laser class 4, the most dangerous one, begins at 500 milliwatts output power. And I'm going to be using a 2 watt laser, so I didn't skimp on protective eyewear. They even included these snap-in sub-goggles for maximum protection. I have no idea what they are for. Get in. Well, we are getting really close now and I'm nervous. Even though I have my fancy sunglasses, I'm going to use this old CCTV camera on a magnetic stand to look at the beam. I mean, would you blindly trust those glasses? At least he has a familiar face. Maybe that helps with the nervousness. Focusing the beam was more difficult than I expected, but it helped that I had a motorized Z-axis. And ultimately it really happened. The best before date on this photosensitive board has long expired, so I sacrificed it for a first test of exposure. Looks like it all works exactly as planned. But apparently something was wrong with the photosensitive layer on this board, so it didn't look that great. But overall this is a radiant success. Time to give it a seal of approval and goodbye.